Mm. Hey, fellas. Welcome back to part two and the final episode in Revel's 148 scale SR71 build. In this exciting episode, I throw paint on it. I finish it up. Uh, and I break the pitot tube off. <laughs> the front nose section the, that you glue on and the pitot tube are all one piece. So when you glue that front nose section on, you've got the pitot tube on. And I broke it off within like minutes of gluing it on. So, yeah, that sucked. But I make a new one out of brass tubing and copper wire. Show you how I do that. And I think it turned out pretty good. Now the, the black paint finish, I get a lot of people asking me how I do black paint finishes. And I've shown it before. But in this episode, I just really simplify it. And basically, I just have a black base coat. I do some pre-shading with gray. And then I blend, all, blend it all in with NATO black. And I really like the look of it. Some people may not, but uh, I think it's just a simple way to paint a black uh, paint finish that's not just black. It's all different colors. So, um, yeah, pretty happy with the way it turned out. I didn't I didn't do any panel line washes, any of that stuff. I just really kept this simple. I, I just like the, the look of, of, you know, this somewhat uh, dark, dark gray, black type finish. I just think it's a really cool silhouette, so... Uh, I may sell this one on eBay. I don't know. I haven't decided. I don't really get attached to models. I just like building them. So once I build them, I could care less whether I keep them or not. I don't know. My only issue is just packing this big thing up, making the box, to be honest with you. It's just a pain in the butt. But if anybody's interested in buying it, send me an offer. My email's in the description of my YouTube channel. Send me an email offer and, uh, you know, maybe maybe we can work something out. I may sell it on eBay later. If not, who knows? And I may just throw it on my uh, in my in my display case. I don't know. But anyway, uh, let's get on with the video. So I've had a few people want to know how I paint my black planes black. Well, I don't actually paint them black. I paint them NATO black, and I do some pre shading with like a light gray. Now, instead of demonstrating on the actual uh, model, the the actual SR seventy one. It's just a lot easier if I demonstrate on this um, part of the fuselage that I that I took out of uh, one of my other kits. So I've went ahead and I've primed this in black with uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer, my favorite primer. And next what I want to do is I want to do some pre-shading. So I've just pulled out a light gray. This is like a medium light gray. I think this is a uh, light ghost gray. You can use any type of gray, whatever you whatever you like. And keep in mind, this is only one way of doing it. Uh, this is the way I like to do it. So I've already got some mixed up in my color cup. And basically, I'm going to do uh, like the black basing technique with this gray. So along the top of my fuselage here. I'm just going to highlight the top area and do all these little squiggly marks. Just like so. Okay. And then along the bottom, like right along here, I'm just going to go back and forth right along the edge and bring it up a little bit. And again, you don't have to be precise with this. In fact, the less precise you are, probably the better. Okay, just like that. I'll do the same on the other side. I'm just going to go along that bottom edge. And you can use other colors as well. I think like a, maybe like some blues or something. You can throw a little bit of um, like a dark blue or a medium blue in as well as the gray and I think that would look kind of cool just depending on what you want and this is again this is just one way to do it um, when I paint a black plane I don't normally paint it straight black because uh, I mean you can't do any shading if it's already black I mean you can't get any more black than black so so um, this is kind of how I do it and when you, when you look at something, I've actually painted a, an F-117 like a dark blue. Uh, it's hanging from my ceiling here. 
And if you didn't hold something black, like straight black up against it, you wouldn't realize it wasn't black. But uh, I think it gives a little bit more of a realistic look to it. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a post-it note. And I'm going to come along, like on the leading edges of my panel lines. And this is the old Revel kit, so it has raised panel lines, which really doesn't make a difference for this demonstration. I'm, dem I'm demonstrating like I know what I'm doing. Um, but... Here we go. So I'm going to go right along the edge of that post-it post -it note. And I'm going to get a sharp demarcation line just like that. Keep in mind, once you do this, you can always come back with a, with the black and adjust and make adjustments. It's, uh, I always just kind of do this by feel. I'll, I'll step back and look at it, but then I get something that kind of looks like that. We'll go ahead and do the other side. And you don't necessarily have to do all the panels this way. We'll just pick out a couple over here. We're not going to do all of them. Maybe some a little darker than others. Okay. So then you get something that kind of looks, well, kind of, it actually looks like that. Okay, now that's going to give me a good base. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some NATO black and I'm going to mix a really thin mixture, okay? So what this is going to do, it's going to blend all this together. It's going to darken up the, uh, the, the, uh, the light gray parts and dull down the black. So the, there's not, it's basically going to take away the contrast between the, the light colors and the black. It's going to blend it all in and give it a nice, and I like NATO black because it's, it's like a dirty, dirty, dark, dark gray. Uh, it's almost a black, but it's not. It's kind of got a little bit of brown in it, I think. So I'm going to pause the video, get my stuff set up, and then uh, we'll come back and spray some NATO on it. All right, I'm actually almost out of this bottle of NATO black. It's, uh, see how much I got left in here. Eh, I got a little bit. It's kind of coagulated at the bottom, so. Ah. Okay. Let me wipe up my mess. The live TV, fellas. It's live. All right, so what I'm going to use is some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Now, you could, I typically, when I thin stuff down a lot, I'll use isopropyl alcohol. But it's really not necessary in this, this case because I'm just going to gradually build it up. So I'm going to put, uh, I'm not really measuring it out. I'm just kind of doing it by eye. Might be a little too much for what I need here. Okay. So I got uh, about that much uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And then I'm gonna mix this up with about maybe a 90-10 to 80-20 mixture. I just want it really thin so I can control it because I don't wanna cover up all my pre-shading. And my since my paint is almost gone, and typically what I do when I when I use this Tamiya paint is I'll put what's left of my color cup back in the uh, in the paint jar. So, and it's never like it's never like uh, mixed the way that uh, it was intended from Tamiya, because I've always got it either lighter or heavier based on how old it is. All right, so. We'll go ahead and pour this in my color cup, and you can see how thin this is. That should be pretty good right there, okay? So put this in the color cup. All right, 
now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start blending this in. And I don't have to, I don't have to like uh, do like a straight pattern. Because again, I want this to look somewhat weathered. And see how that starts to blend in there. And gradually build it up. The thing you don't want to do is have this so, so thick that when you spray it down, it just immediately covers all your pre-shading up. I'm going to be able to control it and blend it in. Now I'll leave the front section unpainted with the NATO black just so you can see the difference. You can see that I've got a black plane that's uh, got a lot more variation than if it was just straight black. It's a lot more interesting. And you can see here, this is the area that I painted with the NATO black, and then here's the unpainted part. How oh, it's, I don't know if the video's picking it up, but it does have kind of a, a brownish hue to it, like, kind of like a dirty gray. So, and that's, uh, that's basically how it's as simple as I can make it for painting a a black plane um, the way I paint them so hmm. all right fellas so I ran into an issue where I broke off the pedo tube now the kit will have that has this little section right up here, right there, that uh, has the pedo tube attached to the very tip of the nose. Now, as soon as I put it on, I broke it off, and you can see down here my pedo tube, and it's it wasn't molded very well anyway, but uh, you know it is what it is. But I broke it off, so. What I've done is I've went ahead and I've drilled out, and I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick it up, but I drilled a tiny hole right in the middle where I cut the rest of the pedo tube off so I can fit some brass tubing in there because I'm making my own tube. Now, <clears throat> this isn't, uh, normally I don't have an issue with doing this, but with this pedo tube, it has this little doohickey thing that comes out the side there, so I have to replace that. And rather than uh, gluing it on with super glue, because it's just not going to stay, I went ahead and soldered it on with my soldering gun here. And I'm not a very good, uh, good at, at soldering stuff, but I can get by. So what I've done is I've cut a little piece of uh, where is it? little piece of like copper. Uh, this is like copper rod. You could use copper wire or anything that's you know really strong and metal. Uh, but I cut a little piece of that and then I just bent it like you see here. And then I've taken a piece of brass tubing. Now the size, I think the size of this tubing is um, a one millimeter in diameter tubing. And then on the inside of that, I'm going to place another brass tube that's 0 0.0 or 0.8 millimeters. I'm going to insert it in here just like so and make my pedo tube. And it's not going to be perfect, but I think it is going to work. So now what I'm doing, after I soldered this, I'm going to, I'm going to have to smooth out my 
all the solder, the excess solder that I have on here. So I'm just taking a file and I'm going to smooth this out and try to make it as uniform as possible so you're not going to be able to see that big lump of solder on there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to dip it and we'll probably come back and do that here when I get to that point. I'm going to dip it into some Mr. Surfacer that's going to act as a primer and a filler and kind of, and uh, basically hopefully cover up any inconsistencies that I have in my weld. Okay, like that. And I think, and, and again, I, this isn't going to be perfect, but, um, you know, it's better than trying to glue this piece on back on and which is really mass nasty anyway I mean the molding was just horrible and I don't know if the video will pick it up but uh, the molding was not good so I'm going to get on with sanding this and then we'll come back and I'll dip it and then we'll paint it up and install it now for this inner tubing that I've got here I am just going to super glue this on I'll just put some super glue on this and then insert it into my tube here and that should that should be enough and then I've got this little bitty area right here where the smaller tubing is going to fit inside that really small hole that I have on the nose so I'm going to get to working on this we'll come back and dip it and then uh, get it painted and install it All right, fellas, so I've got it, got the inner tube glued in. And I'm trying to hold the plane in one hand and the pitot tube in the other. So I've got the inner tube glued in and it's gonna fit in that tiny little hole that I got here. Just like so. Like that, and I can probably, you'll probably be able to glue it back, glue it in there to make sure that it's, sits in there perfect because right now it's a little saggy but that's what we got for the pitot tube all right fellas so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to dip this and i've got some mr finishing surfacer 1500 and all i'm going to do is i've got a, i've got some lacquer thinner and a little brush here just in case i'm just going to take this and dip it just dip it in there let the excess run off You really don't want to manipulate this too much after you've dipped it because it will dry pretty quick. But I'm just going to take my brush and wipe off some of that excess. Okay, now what this is going to do is it's going to uh, cover up some of my tiny imperfections that I had from... You know just putting this thing together and soldering it and sanding it and it's also going to prime it so when I go to paint it okay just like that so when I go to paint it um, it'll I, I won't need to prime it anymore I won't need to spray it with anything other than my my top uh, metallic color and it should look all uniform almost as if it was a molded piece of plastic but it's going to be a lot sturdier. So um, there we go. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to set this up on my little dealy here, dealio here. It should dry fairly quickly. So I'll come back and I'll paint it probably within an hour, and then uh, and then we should be good with a pitot tube. So a lot better than a. I mean, it may not be completely 100% accurate, but uh, it, uh, it it does get the point across. So all right. All right, let's take a look at the model. And before we get started, though, I did use aftermarket decals. Now, I've got these uh, Caracal model sets, part one and part two. Uh, they do fit. These are actually meant for the testers kit, but they do fit all of them except for this little part that goes around the refueling port. It's a little bit short on these because the, the one on the testers kit is a little bit uh, different size. So I did splice two of these together. Uh, you probably could have made one work, but I, I, I really wanted it to uh, uh, to look right. So I, I went ahead and just spliced two of them together. So, uh, But these are pretty good decals. You can get them on eBay, I think. I think there's still a few sets on there. 
But uh, I wanted something a little bit different than what what everybody else was is, are, is probably going to be building because of the, you know the the kit decal. So I've got Rosemary's baby son on here. I just actually like the look of that uh, um, the little uh, the artwork there on the on the fin. But uh, here we go. I've got the, I went ahead and I bent my acrylic rod. Now, because this is at such an angle that I had to put this in, I've got some tape in here just to give a little bit extra grip. It doesn't look pretty, but you're not going to be able to see it. Because that's such an angle, uh, it can only set one way. So I went ahead and bent my acrylic rod just a bit so I can have it tilted in a couple of different ways. Now, this is the way I would probably display it, like at this angle. But if you turn it, then you can adjust the way it sits on the base, which I think is kind of cool. So if you want it more of looking at it uh, with the silhouette, you could do it that way, um, you know, or you could have it tilted up a little bit more like that, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. The overall, I, I think it turned out really good. It's a lot better than the, the old testers kit. Um, you know, I didn't do a whole lot of weathering other than just the pre-shading that I did, painting my black paint. I think that for, for what this is and how big of a piece it is, I, I, I really like the way, it, the way it turned out. I didn't do any panel line washes. Um, sometimes I'll come in here with a dark gray or a dirty gray and do some panel lines. But uh, since some of the panel lines really weren't that deep, and rather than doing the whole thing and part of them, I really just stuck with, with what I had here. And I think it turned out pretty good. Um, overall, you know, I'm, uh, like I said earlier, I was somewhat disappointed in the kit, uh, but it does, you can build it up to be a cool looking Blackbird, and it's a thousand times better than the, uh, than the testers version. Uh, the base, I was going to put the display engines on there, but I built one up and it just looked like crap. And to be honest with you, it would have detracted from the actual model. It would have made it look goofy, I think. So I left those out. And um, I really spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the, the artwork on the display base. Uh, it, it, uh, I wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want to clutter it up. And, you know, but I didn't want a, uh, an entirely black display base either. I didn't want to, like, mimic the, the, uh, the, the skin on the, on the SR-71. So I came up with this idea after looking at some artwork online. And I think it turned out pretty good. So um, there we go. Uh, the... Pedo tube is on there. It's actually not glued in, but um, it uh, it fits in there actually probably without any glue now that I got paint and everything on it. But uh, it turned out turned out better than expected. And uh, so there we go. I uh, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will catch you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.